All this week, we're taking the time to celebrate the 50th anniversary of what many call one of the greatest achievements in history, the Apollo 11 moon landing. The launch, the landing, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's first moonwalk, those pivotal and historic moments captured the imagination of sky gazers around the world and inspired a generation of astronauts and scientists. Well, our next guest was in her early 20s when Neil Armstrong took that first step on the moon's dusty surface. She is Canada's first female astronaut and also the first neurologist in space. Dr. Roberta Bondar joins us right now in studio. So thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you. You know, I want to begin with your memories uh, of the, the moon launch and the moon walk. Where were you? What, what were you thinking as it all happened? I was between my bachelor's degree and my master's program, and so I was able to have some summer holidays to be back in my hometown of Sault Ste. Marie. And I remember being being there with my dad uh, and just looking at this television that was now is like an old TV in black and white. And just it, every, every second when they were landing and then there was this time delay before you got the signal and then there was a time when they were trying to get their suits on and, and the whole preparation. So you kind of really, I think for me, I got really, really excited. And it was something I'd always wanted to do since I was a child. So when they stepped out in the moon, I was just like, it was, it was their heart can now slow down and uh, really enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. mm. The fact that you, you saw this great achievement, did that open up your own horizons? You, you say that you had thought of being an astronaut, but what did it do for you to inspire you to actually pursue that dream? Well, when I was a little girl, I used to put plastic model rockets together, which are now at the Bush Plain Heritage Center in my hometown. And these plastic model rockets were really what people thought we'd be taking into outer space. And of course, probably only one of them might have been close. It was the time when I was between these two degrees thinking about what path did I need to to travel on because there weren't any women in the space program and what would I what would I need and I thought well they've got to get around to it someday they must and I wasn't able to get into the RCAF or anything else in the armed forces so I thought well I'm going to be a doctor because I've always wanted to be a doctor and mm. heck you know when engineers get sick they'll need doctors. <laughs> Smart thinking. But you know, I, I actually want to talk about that because you, you were dreaming of being an astronaut when so many fields, so many industries were, were shut out for women. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you think that you could actually pursue this? Because I had a very supportive family who felt all along that if I wanted to be a spaceman, because there was no astronaut in those days growing up, then I should be. Then the world should be open to me. So they were always trying to support both me and my sister Barbara in, in every adventure that we were having. So it was basically, hey, you know, I can do this. I can do this. I just need the opportunity. I don't need the obstruction. I just wanted to be there at the right time with the right skill set. And, and I was more qualified in academically than anyone else who was selected for the program. I just felt that I had the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, how could they possibly ignore me? Well, which is great, uh, but I, I was also reading that uh, somewhere along the way you made the comment that uh, seeing the moon landing also seemed to wipe away uh, barriers of sexism, barriers of racism, that, that science and technology had this ability to, to overcome such obstacles. Well, I was hoping that would be the case. It, it's, it's that moment when they landed on the moon to me was an affirmation of everything that I believed would have to be possible for people to go into space, an affirmation that the technology could work, that, that one could be focused and dedicated, that a human body could be able to withstand all this. And it, to me, it didn't matter that it was a man at the time because I did feel that, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna have women. Uh, it has to happen. And so I just thought, this is, this is what I wanna do. And this is an affirmation. This re-inspired me to have the confidence that there would be the opportunity. I mean, I wasn't guaranteed it, but if I didn't have the skill set, if I didn't have the strategy to go along with my passion, it, wouldn't, it wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, now they're talking about uh, another moon mission. Uh, mm -hmm. the, NASA is looking at that, as even India is looking at sending their own module up to the moon. Uh, what will that mean, do you think, for future generations of people that perhaps have not thought of a career in space? I think it's really great. I mean, all along with technology now, with computer systems that we have as a, as a heritage from the first programs, these are the kinds of things that we need to connect the world together and we need all cultures. Space is expensive, it's an expensive proposition. 
and in order to be able to tease out the kinds of things that we can for even more technology here on Earth, we need to have a robust program that's inclusive. So I think that all countries participating is, is very good. I don't look at it, um, and maybe I'm kind of unusual, but I don't look at it as a competition amongst nations. And it's great to raise the flag and say, I'm Canadian or I'm Japanese or I'm American, whatever. The fact is that we use everyone's technologies and input to do these things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and space really is, going to Mars is going to be, has to be much more of an international effort. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a push right now that when uh, the next moon mission happens with NASA that they want a woman to step foot on the moon. Now that we've had men step on the moon, they think it's time for a woman. What do you think of that push? Well, I think that because they have qualified men and women, and there have been men, there's no reason why a woman can't, can't be on the moon. And I think it, sets a, it really is a good statement about the kinds of, of respect that we have for both genders and that a woman now can take that turn and be in the spotlight. I, I don't try to diminish the fact that there were men in the original program because that's the way it was set up. Mm -hmm. I think now to diminish women would be not right because we do have qualified people who can go into space. Mm -hmm. So to say that one person's more qualified than another it can't be based on gender. You know, somewhere out there, uh, there's a young person, a teenager, even younger, watching you speak right now, hearing us talk about the Apollo 11 mission and future space missions. What do you say to the dreamer that thinks, you know, maybe I want to go to space? I think we all have to be dreamers, and we all have to keep the curiosity, and then we need to, as I said, follow the passion with a strategy so we can move curiosity to creativity, and then from the creativity point, we can follow what, in our hearts, will help us stay engaged and stay excited because that's what we need in life. There's enough stuff that comes at us unknown and things that can kind of push us down a little bit, but we need to keep those inspiring moments. We keep those inspirational people around us to, to keep, keep us up that level that we can pursue what it is that we are gifted to do.